The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earnestly Speaking Podcast coming to you on September 21st, 2021. How you guys doing? Um, of course, this podcast you subscribe on any podcast catcher, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify especially, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts, any other, like I said, we're all over the place. Um, how are you guys doing? Um, it is Tuesday afternoon here, and I'm, once again, my new Tuesday routine is I'm in a very quiet household. Um, as you know, my, all my kids are in school, my wife's at work for the day, and, uh, you know, so I got this time to record. I, I'm Actually, what's happening, too, uh, I'll get a little, get a little bit of insight about how I do this, do this show here, for example. You know, a lot of, today is pretty much the only day I can get, like, multiple podcasts in so what i've been doing lately and you guys know it's on the feed i've been doing my buddy zach and i the degenerate we've been doing our weekly podcasts um on our picks of the week and whatnot i normally release those on wednesdays but what i do is that i record those i record those every um every tuesday night um he's at work and then i record it like late night and then i just put it out there wednesday wednesday days so it's i try to get as enough recordings as i can definitely try to get a solo pod i do here um, in the show, and then maybe try to um, get one more in, um, you know, and put it out in a week. There's a lot of things I'm trying to work out here with the schedule, because obviously, you know, when you're balancing life, you're balancing, there's so many things, you know, and I, the, the, the goal for me, I, I would like to have at least, okay, so minimum two podcasts a week. Two podcasts a week, two full podcasts a week. Now, obviously, I've, I've been releasing some little ones here, here and there, and like, you know, picks of the week and that kind of thing. Um, I, I, I like to give out at least 30 minutes of content. I, I, I'm not really a huge fan of like this throwing two minute podcast here and five all the time. I, I'm, I'm open up to the idea of doing that now because I, I mean, obviously if you want to get content out there, that's, that's all that matters is getting the content out regardless how it, how it, how it is. And I actually d- did consider changing the name of the podcast a little bit, not, not the, the entire name, just kind of make it, instead of making it a speaking podcast, making it a speaking radio because it's, it's a lot of ways it's, it's kind of like, you know, if I want to get as much content out there as I want out, you know, in, on a weekly basis, I need to open up more ideas of maybe just throwing out, you know, if I do a five minute podcast on this topic or a reaction podcast, I I should be able to do that. Um, I I, I do get a little bit of a, in the weed sometimes in myself in my head how I want to do things and um and being organized and I'm so like OCD when it comes to everything, including podcasting, including including content. You know, it's funny because I, <clears throat> I, I actually think the way you know, the, especially the way Dan Levitard doesn't like the, 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 the Dan Levitard show. Dude, I can't talk today. Wow, <laughs> it's been a weird day today. Actually, it's raining all day today. You know, they just record content and just dump it, just dump it. And a lot of people who I've follow, I've, I've, I've continued doing the same. You know, just take record content, regardless how long it is, and just dump the content and then call, keep it moving. And you know. There was a time I did I did do that back you know a couple of years ago in the show, but you know as I've got more organized and I, I I like to keep things in its proper place. You know, there's some people who record content, and build up content for a week, and then put out the show once a week after the fact. You know, I know, I know a couple of podcasts I'm, I'm I'm you know cool with that do that. They they record segments throughout the week, then they take all the segments, you know, throughout the week, put it into one big episode, and then put it out as one as one episode, which I respect as well too. Um, but again, it is a challenge for me to get in here sometimes to record multiple times times a week because again, you you're balancing family life and you're balancing other personal personal uh, um, priorities. So we'll see how it goes. So for the time being, you're definitely gonna get stuff on Tuesday, definitely. Um, possibly Sunday as well too. Sunday early early Monday. Um, although I didn't get a chance to record on on Mon- um, Sunday night because I was with family without discussing a second. So. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm talking about here. Let's talk about some current events that's been going on. Um, I'm actually a week behind on this story, and I meant to put it on the last show, but I didn't do that. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit here. Um, last Tuesday was the, Calif- the California recall election. Um, basically, uh, if you guys have been following this, um, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, was petitioned to be uh, to be removed as governor, mainly because of the handling of the, of the COVID, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the the petition got approved. I think it was earlier this year. And then, obviously, if if he uh, if the state of California voters um, 
got 51% or more voters to vote either way, yes or no, he could have been removed. Well, he did win. Once I say win, he will retain his office because the, uh, the, the California um, um, voters have, still want him as governor, at least in comparison to the other option. In other words, you know, he he won. He basically they they uh, they uh, they voted not to recall him. In other words, let's put it, let's put it that way. Um, I'm a little shocked here. Not so much that he won. I, it was no surprise he was he was not going to be pulled because let's face it, California is a very strong ruby blue, royal blue state. Um, you see it every four years. It's it's a very liberal state. Now there there are definitely a lot of conservative pockets in in, in the state of in California. There's no doubt about that. Like like in any state, there's there's pockets of you know some even in some red states you'll see some pockets of of of, of liberal Democrats or not, but. You know, much much in the same way we look at Alabama as a uh, uh, ruby red state and Mississippi and you know a lot of the southern states like that. California is one of those blue states. It's California, it's New York, uh, it's Oregon. Um, come on, you know it's Massachusetts, a very strong blue state, uh, blue states. But I am shocked. I am shocked. Not that he was not recalled. I'm shocked that the it was not closer. I was saying all, all along that I think this could be a lot closer. Than people think because because there's a lot of people also that are not happy with the way Gavin Newsom had handled the pandemic, and then you have him going to you know random parties and he's not masked up and he's been very restrictive in terms of the the mandates. And again, I'm not against the mandates. Like I said I, I I think the mandates in, in its proper place. Although I think at this point now where we're at now with the pandemic, that should be legislated by private business, businesses and private citizens. The government should not be in, in, the, in the business of mandating anything at this point. Um, unless it's, it's an extreme emergency. Um, but it's another debate for another day, obviously. But I'm surprised that, that, that he won as big as he did. I think the reason why he won as big as he did because of the fact that the other option was not viable for most of the Californians. Larry Elder. Now, I've spoken about Larry Elder in this podcast a few times in the past. Um, I've do like Larry Elder to some degree on some things. I do agree with him on on on, on some issues. Uh, um, you know, not, not not a lot, but surprisingly, not a lot of it's political though. Um, a lot of it is more personal. Um, <clears throat> he's an African American um, man, radio host, libertarian. Um, got a lot of Trumpy in the recent years though. Got very Trumpy, which I guess that's that's the that's the win now. If you're on the right and you want to make any headway, you got to be somewhat Trumpy. That, that's where the party's at now. Even even with a shrinking Republican Party, it's still a very Trumpy party. Um, even after Trump has lost the election, you know, almost a year later. Um, but it, you know, it's it's you know, I you know Larry Elder, I I thought would have gotten more traction, but then some things started coming out, but some some you know things he said in the past, you know, and whatnot, and obviously you you see, you start hearing the warts, and then when you hear the warts, it's like oh well, yeah, I don't like Gavin Newsom. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna vote for this other guy either. This is run this out and whatever. So Gavin Newsom is up for re-election, I think, uh, next year. I think it's in 16 months. My opinion is that I don't think he'll. Uh, well, he he may run again. Um, I think he's still even by winning this recall. I do think he is still a little hot water because I, I think there's still a lot of Californians, even liberals themselves, Democrats. Who may not ask, who may have what might have recalled him had the other option been a more a more quote unquote viable option, um. So therefore, um, I I I think Gavin Newsom is still not out of the woods yet. Honestly, I mean, just because he won this by big, I think it was more of a situation than anything else. Um, is the reason why he won this won this election. Um, just my opinion. You know, I'm not I'm not a big Gavin Newsom guy myself. Um, I had critic. I'm, I've been critical of the way he was handled handled the uh, pandemic. I know I've I've, I've had people, friends of mine who are from California who live in California have been critical of him as well. Excuse me. Um, so I'm not terribly surprised. You know, I, I I I'm more concerned. I'm actually more curious about next year and when it, when there's an actual race, if he'll be if if he decides to run, if there is a a, a challenger out there that can you know usurp him. You know, now based on the demographics and based on the way California is politically, he will probably win an election, most likely. But I, I'm I'm a numbers guy. I'm I'm curious if the numbers will be a lot closer this time around. 
I'm a little shocked that this, this you know, basically he he's well the, all the goals that have not been counted yet. As of as of uh right, so I'm actually on the Washington Post website right now and there's still twelve percent of the votes still out there to be counted, but he's up by twenty six percent, um, over two million votes. Well two, almost three million votes actually he's up um in this in this recall. So but I'm curious how this will play out during a regular governor governor's race because I mean doing a recall in the middle of a random recall while it was very very noted um I do think um you know you know it, it, it's hard you got a lot of people out I mean you're wrong 10, 10 million people 10 million plus people did vote so people were engaged but I'm just curious if you know if this happens next year does Newsom survive re-election if he does decide, decide to run for election just curious on that one um, you know the political spectrum right now. It's weird because like it's not as loud as it used to be because of Trump being gone. Although Trump's around, but you know obviously him not being on social media does kind of temper the volume a little bit. But it, it, it is strange because right now, if you look at the optics right now currently, like Democrats seem to be in trouble going forward. Like you look at all the all the the printing and and everything else, and you talk to people regardless of where they're on the aisle. Um, it does feel like Democrats could be having a could have a rough midterms next year but i had zach join on the podcast last week of course doing my picks and he we, we did a little quick segment on the uh on the recall you know going into it and um he said that the, the maybe the, the texas law that came, that came through recently with the uh you know the, the abortion law that could that change things to democrats i don't know it, it could it could not is that issue a strong issue that cert, you know more, ma- mainly this is that issue something that slight right independents, you will, slight left, who may not like Joe Biden or how things are going, Joe, the Joe Biden administration, who may consider going the other way in the next election, at, at the very least in terms of the uh, in terms of the midterms, does that one single issue flip? Because the the, the abortion issue, really, to be honest with you, is mostly a strong right issue. A, a lot of those people. Folks who really are embedded in the, especially the pro-life segment of the of the uh, of the, of the uh, political climate, a political uh, uh, sector, are mostly on the strong, heavy, right, heavy right side of the aisle, and most of those people honestly are one one issue voters. That's all they care about. They don't care about the economy. They don't care about anything else. They care about just abortion. That's it. And I know this because again, I'm I come from that world. I was raised in that in the church, and I was once pro-life. You know, before understanding what what it actually means, which again, because we can tell us discussing that the other day. I actually, although I did actually discuss that on the podcast a couple weeks back. So we'll see. I'm I'm really curious how the political climate is going to be in the next like you know twelve months. Excuse me. Um, and dude, for the record, we we are in campaign time because the midterm is only less than fourteen months away. You know, it's next year, November. We're already in September 2021. Just saying, just saying. You know, get your political claws out now because they, they, the shit ain't going away. You know. So anyway, um, I want to talk about something here that was kind of on my mind the last couple weeks in talking to people, you know, friends of mine, family of mine, members of mine who have children and who are raising kids and whatnot, and their issue and their stances on college. Okay, so I didn't go to college. I made decisions to not decision not to go just because I had other things I wanted to do. Um, obviously, back in the early two thousands, I was in a band. I wanted to chase the dream of, of becoming a musician and being a touring band and whatnot. And that's the decision I made. A decision I, I lived with. Um, the only regret about college, I don't necessarily regret go, not going to college. The only thing I regret about college right now, if I look back, now I'm forty one years old. Is that I, I didn't get to really experience the fun parts. Like you hear the stories, the partying stories, and this, this and that. Like you hear from, hear from my family and, and people who went to college, and you know, it, I, I, it does sometimes feel like I missed out on something, you know. But again, I made it. I did make a conscious decision at the time to not go to school because I just didn't want to go to school. Number one, number one, it's pricey. It's, it's expensive. So now, those same people I talked to about this this topic, we even discussing it in terms of our children and whether or not you, you know they're gonna are they gonna pay for their kids school or are they gonna you know get scholarships or whatever 
I was talking to my sister about this actually over the weekend, um, and um, you know they're they're trying to put some them in positions to to also go to school as well too. Um, I my position on college is this: I think college is good. Um, I don't think I, I think I think education in general is great. I do think college, the way we see it, the way we've seen it for years, is overrated though. I do think people make college the be all end all, and my my issue with school is not even so much school; it's more so the environment and more so just the. In other words, I find colleges very predatory, not just the college themselves, but also the um, you know student loan and you know financial backing and whatnot. I have friends and family of mine who who finished school twenty years ago that are still paying student loans, still paying student loans. And one reason why I didn't go to school because I, I didn't want to deal with that. Because the more I didn't know what, what I was going to do, you know, I had people tell me you should go to school. Like, just go to school, whatever. Just do it, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, but I don't know what I want to do, and why would I waste money going somewhere where I'm still lost in the shuffle, not know, not knowing what I want to do? And then you have has people people who go to school end up leaving school and or finishing school. But don't even go, you know, start their career doing the thing they were going to school for in the first place. I personally think trade schools is, is underrated. I think it's college, for me personally, I think if you're going to college, if you're going to college, I think it has to be a situation where you know what you're doing. Like if, if you're going to become a doctor or a lawyer, dentist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and it requires schooling, then as long as it's streamlined, and that's important. As long as you stream on to the, to the to destination, you know, yeah, then it has its place. But I find college as a whole, student loan, all that, the whole environment on, on school, I just find it completely predatory. You know, and and one of the reasons why this came up also, too, is that this is obviously there's a big discussion, nationwide debate about should student loans be forgiven. And I can be honest with you, I actually... I'm actually very, very, I don't have a strong position on either way. Because on one hand, student loans and, and these companies are very predatory. And it's disgusting. But on the other hand, you, the person, the private citizen, made the decision to make to get the loan. You know, I, I, I get it. Yeah, you need it. But it kind of goes on line also to why I think school is predatory too. Either. They don't, it's, 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 it's very expensive, in other words. They don't make school affordable. My whole thing is that schools should be affordable. It should be free. I don't know if it should be free. People say you should have free colleges. I, I don't know, honestly, because that's another situation where you do free college. Who's paying for it? We are taxpayers, and I think we should have a say in that. I, I don't have a strong sense or strong um, position on, on that right now because I still, you know, in doing the research, you have to see, you'll figure out if that's something that you would want to contribute to that, like anything else, like universal health care or anything of that nature. So free college is something I'm not. I don't have a strong sense either way. I had I because I see both sides of the, of the argument. I see this on the argument about people, you know, that we should be forced to pay some for something like that, you know, taxpayers. And on the flip side, you know, you know what I mean. But I do think that is a debate worth having. I do, I do think do think it's, it's definitely a conversation worth having. You know, but I do think school. I do think college is overrated. I think. Trade schools on the radio. I think if you know what you're doing, and you, and you, as long as you're streamlined into it, that's that that's that's the play. That to me, that's the play to go to to, to go. You know, um, but again, the college loans and all that should be forgiven. I don't know honestly, because then you open a Pandora's box. You forgive these loans, and the people who went to school years ago that pay off their loans, they don't. They don't. They, that money's gone. You know what I'm saying? Does that argument? Made for that. I don't know. I, I would like to have a debate with someone, someone about this on, on the podcast and in the near future about that because it's something um, that I'm very much interested in, you know? So, anyway, so this weekend I had a, I had a really, really entertaining weekend. Um, I, well, I worked most of the weekend, but Sundays is my, is my day off. And Sundays, obviously, with football back, that's my um, my lone focus. You know, I, I settle in. I t- what, what I do now because my kids are so used to going to the pool with me. Or, go, or doing activities with me during the day, which is a lot easier to do when there's no football on. But I prioritize football, obviously. So what I try to do every Sunday is I try to get get all those activities done 
before one, the one o'clock kickoff on red, on red zone. So I try to get the kids to the pool early in the morning, you know, nine ten in the morning. Make sure I have my lineup set. Make sure, um, you know, all that's my 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 picks of the week, my gambling picks. Like I I'll parlay some games just for fun, you know. Not burning money, just five dollars, you know, to make sixty something dollars, no big deal. But then I woke up, woke up on Sunday, and my sister, my sister sent me a text saying, "I asked him what's coming up to to, um, to to visit and hang out with the family." And it it was shocking because I I had asked, I actually had wanted to go the week before, and but they were out of town, and then I, I said I'll come up this weekend. But I forgot about it because I've been so busy. We had we had my my my, my wife's grandparents in town, well, great, her grandparents in town for the whole weekend, so we've been dealing with that. Um, and I haven't had a chance to really do anything. Outside of, the, of of committing to that stuff, as well as my job, and you know, so when she texted me, I was like, I was set to just staying home. I didn't give a crap who was calling me. I I, I don't go anywhere. But then she texted me saying you're coming up. I'm like, you know, I don't want to leave the house, but you know, I don't want to all take some granted. You know, we, she just moved back down from Connecticut after 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 a long time, you know, and happy that my family's back get back down here closer to me again. So why not take advantage of the thing that you've been excited about having fed back in, in town? And the cousins too. My um she has three kids and my I have two kids and they're all close and stuff. So I'm thinking, well, maybe if, if I go with the boys, they'll have a good time going to the pool and all that. She has a she has a beautiful house up up in up in Stewart, you know, a beach house. Um and so I'm thinking, well, maybe I should just get my ass and just make the trip up there and have a good time. So the intention was to go up there for a couple hours and have to go to the pool, whatever, watch watch a couple games and go home. But, but we were there a lot longer than than I even planned to, and I had a good time, you know, with my sister. We were we were bonding really, to be honest with you. Like, and we never really chance to to do that because a lot of times when we when I go to see her or see the that side of the family, um, I also you know am you know with other family too. So I'm also dividing time with my with my dad who's up there or my brother or someone else or, or a cousin whatever it be. But this time is this is the first time I was up there alone with her, you know, and her and, and my brother in law and then our kid and then um their and our kids. And then my nephew and my brother brother in law went went golfing. So my sister had a lot of time to talk, you know. And that's what her and I are really good at. We are very uh we're big talkers. She was on a podcast last year. I'm gonna have her on on again soon. And um yeah. So we um no, we had, we had a great time. We were talking about a lot of things. We, we got we got we got a lot of discussions about, um, you know, just life and you know, politics and growing up and you know, and it, it was really cool bonding because I, I you know I love you know you guys know me I love to talk I love the conversation I love to talk about and and she's one of the few people I feel like that when I talk, you know, you know, there's actually a nice discussion, whether we agree or disagree on it. A nice discussion involved in there, and I don't, and not a lot of people can stimulate me that in that way in terms of discussing, you know, life in general. She's one of you. Like my wife is one. She's my sister's one. My mom definitely. My parents, both my parents, are, you know, we we talk for hours and hours. I I love to talk, you know. So, you know, we did that. I, 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 had, I had a great time, you know. And it's funny because like you know, growing up with her, like, so we're a blended family. Like we have the same dad, and different mom. Um, so I lived with her maybe a few times. And, uh, I, there was one time, I think in 1987, when I was like seven years old, I lived with them for, you know, a year. And her and I used to always fight. We didn't, I, 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 I'll be honest, I couldn't stand her. <laughs> I, I, I really couldn't stand her. Uh, because, but a lot of it, too, also was because I was jealous of her, too. Because, you know, we, her and I were somewhat athlete. Well, I, I was somewhat athlete. You know, she was always the fastest one. She was always the smartest one. Although she claims I'm the smartest one. But, no, no, she, she's intelligent. She's driven. I, I, I admire her. It wasn't until, like, when my dad and her mom got divorced in 1994, 95, that her and I started coming a little closer. And I think ever since we, we've gotten become adults, we've always we've gotten more, more and more and more closer. And it's cool. Um, and, you know, and it's cool. Like, the cool part is that now we have our fam own families, you know, we're both in interracial marriages, you know, which is, which is great. You know, so we have, a lot, we have a lot in common in that way. Um, she's, she's, she's someone I've, I admire, you know, for a long time. Um, and she's driven in ways that I wish I was, I wish I was driven the way she was about, about life, about bettering herself, bettering her family, you know, and she, and she's, she's gotten where she is because she, she's determined 
and I wish I wish I was really that even half as determined as she was about life. So, but yeah, we had a great time with great discussions and you know whatnot. And really glad I really I'm really, I'm really glad the weekend worked worked out the way it did because um, I love when I come home and I feel like I've gotten you know productive time with people that I care about, and that was the case this weekend with my sister. We really bonded, had a great time. So, anyway. Last night, Monday Night Football, I'm not going to talk about the game because who cares? Anybody that is surprised Green Bay won, is, you're just stupid. <laughs> Green Bay, you know, spoke in Detroit. I bet the game, I didn't make any money. I bet the under and I got the over. I got the Packers covered, but I, I, I didn't get the, uh, I didn't get the, um, um, the under, unfortunately. Dumb. Not, not, not a bad bet, actually, honestly. I should have bet the over in that game. Anyway, um, so last week when I, first, when I saw the first Monday Night Game, Baltimore and Las Vegas, I watched the regular broadcast. I heard about. I had forgotten that they had started doing the Eli Manning, Peyton Manning, Eli and Peyton Manning um, um, alternative uh, broadcast. So I, I heard a lot about it after the fact. So this week I made, I made a point to you know what? Let me go lock in. They go. Let me go and uh, listen to them this time. And, and, and no, 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 granted, I, I didn't do the entire game with them on there. I just want to see how it sounded. To be honest, it was kind of cool actually seeing those two. You know. You know, I don't want to say commentate. Let's talk about the game while the game's running. They weren't really commentating the game. What they were doing, really, they were talking. It's like doing a watch along, pretty much. I've done it before on the show, too, where I'll play an old uh, wrestling match and I'll just like me and whoever my guest was at, at that moment talk about the wrestling match, you know, and talk about everything around it. Same vibe with Eli and Peyton. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know, however, if I can do that every week because I, I do like traditional. Broadcast. I do like hearing the play-by-play guy, the 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 you know the color commentator, and and them responding. Like you, the insight you get from, from Peyton and Eli is, is cool because they're both you know both legendary quarterbacks. One's a Hall of Famer, one's probably Hall of Famer too. Um, and Eli, my guy, New York Giants, of course. Um, but I am curious, you know, will this be the norm for other sports, other leagues, you know? Because I I, I will say like. You've seen athletes now when they retire get into the broadcasting field, podcasting field, um, just being analysis, all that. And it works a lot, a lot of ways. Like, definitely in the podcasting realm. I tell you, that, some of the best podcasts out there are actually won by, by former athletes. You know, not all of them, but some of them are. Um, but I do like the, pers- the perspective that Eli and Peyton bring to the table. Like I said, I don't know if I can actually do it every week, or not every week, you know, do the entire game that way. I do think the interesting part of the of the whole thing they do is not just so much them talking, is their guests. They brought in uh, this week they brought in Rob Gronkowski. I know that. Um, I, I didn't watch the entire thing. That's all. All I saw was Gronkowski and whatnot. Um, but it was cool. I like the idea. It's actually very creative. Um, if you get the right guys to do it too, especially it would work. Eli and Peyton are pretty. I don't think I watch it with Peyton alone. I think Eli being a little more that uh, you know, little brother kind of like you know like. You know, dorky little brother is there. You know, it kind of adds a little blended, blended element to the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I, I did enjoy it though. I did, I did, I did enjoy it. Like I said, I don't know if I'll do it every week. I don't know if I'll do it every, you know, the full three hour, three hour binge every every Monday. But I, I think it's a good idea, and I think if you get the right people to do it, the right guys to do it, um, it could work. Um, and, 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 it, and it really, honestly, it does spice up the the product a little bit too. Although I am a traditionalist, I do love my. You know, was it Steve Levy's doing Monday Football now? Steve Levy and Louis Riddick. I, I enjoy Louis Riddick. A lot of people don't like Louis Riddick. I, I think Louis Riddick is fantastic as a color guy. You know, he's not freaking Pat Summerall, John Madden, but you know, it's not a bad team. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually okay with this Monday Football team. I, I know people don't like it. I, I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. You know, it's not, not, the, not the, uh, the old uh, team from yesteryear. You know. Anyway, also, um, we're two weeks into the season. And we'll talk, talk. We'll have a full slate of football talk on the next podcast. You know, uh, picks of the week. We're also going to be doing um, my boy Mike Bernier, the Squid Bernier. We're going to be doing um, um, our power rankings also on the podcast. We're doing a separate segment on the uh, next episode. Um, but um, what's two weeks in? Now it's silly to talk about MVPs now. Two weeks in, but who gives a shit? Let's do it because it's been a fun season so far. Um, and to me, it's a simple. To me, if obviously this season is not ending today, but if we took a, the two game sample, 
of the season and just ranked out your top three MVP candidates right now? Who's been the most impressive player so far out the gate? Two or three players, and to me, it's really easy. Colin Murray, who's probably the front runner in my opinion, for MVP. He's been fantastic in both in both uh, his starts in Tennessee and against Minnesota this past Sunday. Tom Brady, who has nine touchdowns. This guy never is never going to age. This guy's never going to. He's dude. He's he is playing to fifty because it's it's so impressive the fact that he's not he's not just playing football now at his age. He's still an elite quarterback doing it. It's insane. The third guy might shock some people, but I'm gonna say it anyway right now. Derek Carr. People say Derek, David Carr. It's Derek Carr. David David Carr retired a long time ago. Uh, Derek Carr has been fantastic this year. Um, the Raiders are surprisingly two and zero. Beating Baltimore last week on Monday Football, that fantastic game, the opening year, and then you go to Pittsburgh on a short week. Ran the Steelers aren't that great. I mean, I just I don't think they're that great. They still got elite defense though, and they still find a way to win that game in Pittsburgh on a short week. Yeah, their cards should be in the conversation. So my three MVPs right now, MVP watch right now on our on our speaking podcast: Colin Murray, Tom Brady, and Derek Carr. I will say Derrick Henry knows right there. Yeah, that huge game he had yesterday, uh, yesterday on Sunday against Seattle could definitely um, is definitely someone you should look out for too, too as well. But Brady, Carr, Murray are the three guys right now on my uh, on my list. So anyway, last thing before I let you go, um, I started watching The West Wing. This is a show that's been recommended by many people, especially my wife, for years. Um, and she said, she's like, you know, you, I don't know why you haven't started a show yet. You, I know you enjoy it because you're, you're a political honk and all that and this and that. And, um, you know, I get it. Um, but for some reason, we started watching it. Because now we're, first of all, I, I told you guys on the last couple episodes back that her and I started watching Ted Lasso, which I love, which I cleaned up well at the Emmys this past week. Although I don't give a shit with the Emmys, with the Emmys but they cleaned up well at the Emmys. Um, but... Ted Lasso, um, obviously a great show. But I started, we, we were trying to find things to watch, and she, she brought up The West Wing again. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Because there's a lot of shows her and I did start in the recent years. Shit, I'll, I'll go far and say, like, last 10 years. The Sopranos, The Wire, um, um, Veep. There's a few HBO shows. Uh, Psych, that shows that I started that I never finished. Some she finished, some not, some some, I, some she didn't. But a lot of the shows that we, I just mentioned, the Borg Empire, that we started and never finished. So we're going through a list of shows that okay, what should we do? Should we start? Should we go back and watch these shows and finish them up or whatever? And then she went West Wing. I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it because I keep hearing about it. I keep hearing all my friends say to watch West Wing. She she's been talking about it for years now. I should watch it. And I'm right now we're about five episodes in the season one. I love it. I I'm not going. I'm I. Knock myself wondering why I didn't watch the show when it first came out. But the reason why I didn't watch it back then, back in 99 when it first came out, because at that point, I wasn't watching much TV. I was into music and sports and, you know, outside the real world, really, I back then anyway, I didn't really care for any television shows. I didn't watch any, you know, you know normal television shows at that time. And then she even told me that you should watch it when we first started dating. I mean, just, I, we just never got to it. But now I'm locked in. I'm, I love it. I, I think it's great. Um, obviously, I'll give my my thoughts on the show once I finish it, you know. And but yeah, I'm enjoying it. So we, what we do every night when the kids are asleep, you know, and I, I have a two TV set up downstairs in, in in our house. And if there's a game on, you know, she knows I love football, and then we'll, you know, eventually basketball will be back very soon. I'll have the the game on the small TV, the smaller TV on one side, and then the big TV will have the West Wing playing or whatever show we're watching. Just right now is the West Wing. Um, which, by the way, um, speaking of speaking of uh, TV, again, once again, I'll, I'll mention Ted Lasso. I'm looking forward to just watching the season finale this uh, this coming um, um, was it this coming Friday? Weird episode, last episode of Ted Lasso. Honestly, on Coach Beard, mostly focused on Coach Beard. I don't know if you guys watched Ted Lasso, but yeah, if you haven't watched Ted Lasso, I highly, highly recommend it. Please, excellent show. So, anyway, that'll do it for me. On, on this Tuesday afternoon um, here in rainy South Florida. Um, I'm on Twitter, of course, at EJQuestion7. Earn Speaking Podcast is subscribe again on all podcast catchers. Also, if you're into wrestling, check out my wrestling podcast. 
that I do with my bo- my boys Mike and Joe. Um, Take Three Wrestling Podcast. We do every Thursday night, release on Friday mornings. Sometimes we do like random episodes, small episodes here and there, depending on on what, what's going on in the world of wrestling. Um, and uh, other than that, that's it. Tell you guys later. Love you guys, and thanks for tuning in. And um, so, so, you know, tell folks of the podcast, subscribe, all that, review. I don't know, whatever. Just for the word. Love you guys. Take care and see you. Thank you.